Okay, I'm recording. So first of all, what I want to do is record what we call a basic, but the standard or our parent, we're going to call this our parent function, okay? Parent function, that's a fancy name for like the standard graph. I'll say it again. Parent function is a math name for the standard or the, the, the original graph, okay? Now the original graph of an x squared. And what we want to do is take a look at what an x squared graph looks like. Well, it's going to look like one of these. It's called a parabola. They're all going to look like this, but the x squared is the parent graph. So let's see what we have. Here is the parent graph right here. I'm going to highlight it. Okay. That is our parent function. How does that work? Well, we just did it. Watch. Watch. Everybody watch. Right here on the x-axis, if x is 0, 0 squared is 0. You said that, right? 0 squared is 0, so I'd have a point at 0, 0. If I go over 1 on the x-axis, we know 1 squared is 1, so we'd have a point at 1, 1. Okay? If I go over to 2 on the x-axis, we know 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. If I go over to 3, we know we just talked about how 3 squared, because we're squaring it, 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? If we go to 4, 4 squared on the x-axis, 4 squared is 16, which puts us off the graph is too high. Now, we also know a negative times a negative is a positive. That's why it goes up. A negative times a negative is positive. So we know negative 1 squared is a positive 1. We know a negative 2 squared is a 1, 2, 3, 4. We know a negative 3 squared is a positive 9. So we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? And negative 4 squared is 16, which goes off the graph. So this is called a parabola. This is called a parabola. Okay? And that is the math name for this graph is a parabola. Okay? Now, shh, shh, stop talking, children. So what we want to do with the parabola is a couple of things. First of all, a parabola is symmetrical. Symmetrical. Now, what does symmetry mean? Same on both sides. It's, yeah. yeah, same on both sides. You guys, it's like a mirror image. You guys agree with that? And so it has what we call a line of symmetry right down the middle. Okay. So here's my line. This is my line of symmetry. My line of symmetry is a straight up and down line that goes right through the middle, right? The equation of the line of symmetry is x equals 0. That's the equation. x equals 0, straight up and down on the x equals 0 axis, okay? And so it is a line of symmetry because it reflects onto itself, okay, the line of symmetry. Now, the first one talks about g of x, and they say, okay, g of x is equal to a 3x squared. So what we want to do to do a 3x squared is this. We're going to make our graph three times as tall. So this graph is going to be three times as tall. Okay, write that down. Because of the three, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'll explain that, okay? So it's going to be a stretch. So what we call a vertical stretch. Okay, you watching? So we're going to take our standard graph or our parent function and we do a vertical stretch. So it's going to be at 0, if we take its height at 0 and multiply it by 3, it stays 0. But at 1, it has a height here at 1. We're going to go 3 times as tall. So it's going to 1, 2, 3. Okay? Because that's my 3x. We're going to vertical stretch of 3. At 2, we're at a height of 4 for the parent function. Now watch. At 2, our parent function is at a height of 4, but we want to go 3 times as tall. 3 times as tall would be up to 12. So we go. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, at 3, we're at 9 of the 3 times as tall is off my graph. It's off my graph. It's too high, right? So we also know that to have a parabola, it's going to have this shape. So it would have to have a reflection over here at negative 1, 3. It's going to have to be this shape 3 times as tall, so at negative 2 it's going to be up here, a reflection over here. So my graph of a 3x squared looks like this. 
it's a vertical stretch. So we call it vertical stretch. It's three times as tall at each at, at each point. Okay. So it's three times as steep. Yeah. So we'll just say it's a vertical three times as steep. I like that. Good one. So a vertical stretch. Okay. Let's look at B. What do you think is going to happen with B? Am I going too fast? No. So with B, two things. One, if it's negative, it's going to be upside down or a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so we're going to say it's a reflection over x-axis, okay? Because of the negative, okay? So the negative is going to make it a reflection over the x-axis, all right? That's the first thing I want to look at, okay? Now, the second thing I want to look at is the fact that it's going to be five times as tall, but going down. Okay, it's going to be 5 times tall. Now let's go through this. Before I do this real quick, we know 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, right? So instead of, watch carefully, instead of 1 squared is 1, we are now going to go, here's 1, we're going to go 5 times as tall, so we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is right about there, upside down. We know it has to have another point on the other side because it's, Symmetrical, right? So this this one's going to be upside down. At two, we're normally up at four, right? Two, we're normally at four. We want to go five times as tall, which would be 20. And so 20 would be like going one, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And of course, it's symmetrical, so we never have another point here. Let me draw this in, and, I'm, and then I'll talk you through this one, okay? Here it is. All right? So what we got, it's upside down because of the negative. It's upside down because of the negative. And it's going to go five times as big. So it still has a vertical stretch of five, but it's reflection of the x-axis because of the negative. Okay? Two things. Reflection of the x-axis because of the negative. Second thing, it's going to be stretched vertically by five. Okay? All right, let's shift over to C. Okay? Okay, to do C, what we're going to do is this. It's going to be 0.2 is tall. Now that's and upside down. So we're going to do two things. One, it's going to be a reflection. It's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. So we're going to reflect over x-axis. And it's going to be squished. So it's a vertical stretch, but not really. It's a vertical squish, isn't it? Squish, because it's going to get smaller. So instead of like 0.2 is big, right? So 0.2 is big, instead of going to 1, see this is 1, we're going to go to 0 0.2, 0 0.2 over here. Instead of going up to 4, let's see, 4 times 0 0.2, 4 times 2 is 8, 0 0.8. So I'm going to go to 0.8, which is hardly anything there at all. So this one's super wide. We're just going to draw it in kind of super wide, okay? So we could say that's a stretch, a vertical stretch, but not really. It's more like a vertical squish, isn't it, right? Wait, why wouldn't you just say a horizontal stretch? You could call it a horizontal stretch as well. Okay, I like that. So Ben says, why not call it a horizontal stretch because it got stretched out horizontally. I like that. Can I say that, Ben? Let's call it a horizontal Stretch. I like that word, Ben. Thank you. Okay, now what about 10? Okay, what about or what about D? And we don't need to do it, but what do you know about D? What could you say about D? It's going to be a tenth of the... It's going to be a tenth as tall, so it's going to be a lot... It's going to, be it's going to have a tenth of the... So it would be more like a horizontal stretch, right? One tenth as tall. Either you could call it a horizontal stretch by 10, or you could call it a squish, right? A squish, okay? How am I doing? So, so what do we know about this number here? So this could be any number. What do we know about this number? What does this number do? What is this number? What is this, whatever this value is, what is this number going to do here? Question mark. Okay, so if it's negative... If this number is negative, it's a reflection. It flips it upside down, okay? If this number is negative, it's a reflection. 
over x axis, right? I think that's what this is saying down here, right? And it also is going to make it a stretch either vertically or horizontally. If this number is bigger than 1, it's going to make it taller. It's going to be a vertical stretch. If this number is a fraction, it's going to make it shorter squished, or, or you could say it's a horizontal stretch. Okay? Seem pretty easy? It all comes down to this. You ready? 0 squared, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and it flips on, on both sides. That's what's make sure. See my parabola, my human. This is Mr. Davies' human parabola. So what a parabola looks like, right? Okay, and then we can either do this, right? That's a horizontal stretch. We can do this, right? Depending on what the numbers are in front, right? We can even do this, ready? Bow down, a frowny face, right? If it's negative, it's a, right? Frowny face, bow down to you, right? You like that? Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and turn the page. Okay. So, quadratic function, right? A quadratic function is sum f of x equals, okay? Are you writing this down? Now, f of x and y mean the same thing. Listen up. This is a very important thing. f of x and y mean the same thing. F of x and y mean the same thing. So when you see f of x, don't worry, it's the same thing. And we'll dis we'll discern the difference later on into higher math classes. We get a pre-calc. But f of x is equal to some ax squared plus bx plus c. And we've been doing these. The thing is, we've been doing these. We haven't been graphing them, but we've been factoring these, right? We've been factoring these, right? We haven't been graphing them. Now we're going to graph them, OK? ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, now the parabola is the graph. It's simply going to be the graph of a quadratic. And they always look like this. See, the, the, the parabolas always look like this. Or parabolas always look like this, or they always look like this. Okay, and they curve. They're not like the absolute value. The absolute values are v and pointy, the problems are curvy, okay? They're curvy, okay? Got it? So it's really pretty easy. The vertex is the very top or bottom point is the vertex, okay? Just like we had a vertex in the absolute value graph, we have a vertex in these, okay? And the axis of symmetry is that line. It's the line that passes through it's the not always not always because we can move these things right I right it's the line that passes over. through the middle of the parabola okay okay and it's always a, it's always 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 some x equal equation it is always going to show x equals equation. x equal equation. Okay? So you ready? How am I doing? So shift over to problem number one on our extra practice. No way to get this, okay? And we're going to go to page 77 in a minute, okay? Does this seem pretty easy so far? Does this seem pretty easy? Big key is this. Zero squared. Zero. One squared. One. Two squared. Four. 3 squared, 9, right? And then the same on the other side, right? Super easy. Okay? And I'll shift it over to the other side in just a minute when you guys get done writing this down, okay? Okay, you ready? All right, let's take a look at problem number one. Okay, are we looking at problem number one? All right, so... Right off the bat, first thing I want to do, it says identify char characteristics. So my vertex, my vertex is at negative 1, 1. You guys agree with that? Vertex at negative 1, 1? It's right there is my vertex, right? 
So the very bottom point is called the minimum. So the vertex is at negative 1, 1, right? Now, we have a line of symmetry then. Line of symmetry. And the line of symmetry looks like this. Now, you don't have to draw it in, but I like to draw it in. My line of symmetry is right here. You guys see that? There's my line of symmetry. It's what cuts the graph right down the middle, okay? The line of symmetry is x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1 is the line of symmetry because it goes right through the x value of negative 1, right? Okay? That seems pretty easy. Now, here's what we know. It's going to be increasing. From negative 1, it's increasing. It's going up, right? See how it goes up? It's going up. So increasing... We're going uphill. It goes uphill from x is greater than negative 1. Okay, I'm going to write that down. We're going to think about that for a second. I'm going to write that down and look at it, okay? Right here is the very bottom, right? Do we agree? Right here is the very bottom, and then it goes up. So from an x value of negative 1, from negative 1 over, it goes uphill. It increases, right? It's decreasing. Even though it looks like it's going up, but that's going backwards. It really is coming downhill. See this? It's coming down, down, downhill, 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 downhill until it gets right there, right? So it's decreasing from x is less than negative 1, okay? Now, right here at the vertex, it's neither increasing nor decreasing. It's just at the bottom. Does that make sense? As soon as we hit boom, that's why I didn't put equal signs on these. As soon as we hit right here, boom, at the bottom, it's at the bottom. It's neither going uphill or downhill, right? You're at the bottom of the hill, you're at the bottom. You're not going up, you're going, not going down, you're at the bottom, okay? All right, let's look at number two. So the vertex. Tell me, everybody, what's, where's the vertex? Right there. It's right there. Okay, I agree. Okay, I heard three, four. So the vertex is at three, four, right? I agree with that. Um, where's the line of symmetry? Line of symmetry is simply x equals 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The line of symmetry is right here. Boom, boom, boom. Right through the middle. x equals 3. Yeah, I like that. Okay. It's decreasing from here over. It's decreasing. It's going downhill. But on the back side, it's increasing. It's going up, 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 up until it gets to the top, right? And then it goes down, 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 down. So I'm going to say it's decreasing from x is going to be greater than 3 because right at 3 is the top. Right at 3, that's at the top, right? So from the top down, it's decreasing, right? It's increasing as it gets to the top, so it's increasing from x is less than 3, okay? From less than 3, it's decreasing, going downhill. You can see it from here, it's going down, down, downhill. It's decreasing, it's going small, it's going down, right? It's decreasing, okay? Thumbs up. Okay, so we've got um, the next lessons already loaded up. If you do not have old lessons in, get those done too. I have not 